So today's uh, short walk is going to be a town centre walk and whilst I'm no historian and I do like local history so I'm going to combine my walking with uh, local history and what we're going to do is we're going to take a short walk around the town and I'm going to point out some of the uh, important buildings and a few little unknown facts about uh, Spalding. So hopefully you'll join me and uh, enjoy. So starting my walk today in Vine Street car park and we go along Vine Street before it turns into the Crescent and then we're going to turn left onto Priory Road. So we turn left into Priory Road And this street's uh, aptly named because this was uh, the bulk of the location for the old Spalding Priory. Um, although there's very little evidence left nowadays, um, Spalding Priory did actually occupy most of the centre of Spalding. So just ahead there you can see uh, the old Johnson Hospital. Um, it's now empty but it was built in 1881 with funds donated by the Johnson sisters and it's been empty since 2009 when the new community Johnson Hospital opened. And right opposite the Johnson Hospital is the South Holland District Council offices and uh, where the car park is there there used to be a church. Next door to the Johnson Hospital you'll see the uh, old nurses quarters. Uh, straight ahead you can see the uh, Spalding Grammar School and we're going to turn left today into Haverfield Road. And on here you'll find the uh, Lighthouse Church. It's a modern building. And at the end of Haverfield Road we come to London Road and I'm going to turn left along the banks of the River Welland. You'll find some beautiful uh, Georgian mansions here on Welland Terrace. Absolutely gorgeous architecture. Very uniform design. And it's here you'll find the old White Horse pub. And the pub stood here since 1732, when at that point it was known as the George. So after we've crossed the Welland we're going to turn right and this is Churchgate. And just off Churchgate you will find our local parish church and this is uh, St Mary and St Nicholas and it dates from around 1284 and it was built by the Benedictine monks of Spalding Priory. And 
after a short walk you'll find uh, Ascliffe Hall and Gardens. Definitely worth a visit. And this beautiful place dates back from about 1450 and it was once owned by the Johnson family. And the museum and gardens are free of charge. In the meantime, we carry on along Churchgate and with the River Welland to our right. And after a couple of hundred metres, we come to the junction of Love Lane. So we're going to turn left down Love Lane. And contrary to what you might think, Love Lane actually has got nothing to do with lovers or anything like that. Um, it's actually named due to the love of God and the proximity of the parish church, which we'll find at the end of Love Lane here. So we're now walking around the back of Ace Cafe Gardens. So at the end of Love Lane we come across the church again. It's the church of St Mary and St Nicholas. So you can either carry on to the end of the road and then turn left, or you can take the little shortcut through the churchyard. And either way you'll come out on Church Street. So as we continue along Church Street we come across the Gamlin Almshouses and these houses have foundations dating back to 1501. Beautiful buildings. So at the end of the road we reach High Street and back to the stone bridge there, High Bridge. We're going to turn right into High Street. So walking along High Street you'll find uh, some really nice old buildings. Uh, many of the old mansions have now gone unfortunately. But this would have been quite an affluent area to live. Holland House dates from 1768. And Clay Hall is a fine Georgian coaching house and now a hotel with about 17 bedrooms. And the old fire station located there to the side of the River Welland. And coming up is the old Chainbridge Forge and that was a blacksmith dating back to the 1700s and it's now still a working blacksmith and also a living museum.
and we're going to continue along here and it turns into a commercial road and then uh, we'll get to the twin bridges so at the end of commercial road and um, turn left at the first bridge and head off down West Illo Avenue West Hello Avenue is a, a wonderful avenue um, with trees down both sides and in the summer when the trees are full absolutely stunning and it's just down here that you'll find the uh, West Hello Pharmacy and the Medical Centre and you'll also find the new fire station And at the end of West Ello Avenue, we're going to turn left onto Pinchbeck Road. You'll notice that uh, the other side of the road where the trees are, that's the site of the old Spalding swimming pool. And the new swimming pool is located a little bit further up now as part of the Castle Sports Complex. Yeah, just behind those trees is where the old swimming pool used to be located. And you'll notice just over there on your right is Pool Close, uh, which could well have something to do with the old swimming pool that used to stand not too far from there and there are some beautiful houses in this part of town and when we get to the traffic lights we're going to be turning right and that's into Kings Road and the history of Kings Road is many years ago it used to be called uh, Stepping Stone Lane and the reason it was called Stepping Stone Lane is that uh, it used to flood every winter in the 1800s so the road would be underwater so it had stepping stones for you to be able to uh, get down the road you had to jump from stepping stone to stepping stone and I guess they changed its name when they fixed the flooding so yeah we're going to turn right at the, at the crossroads here uh, onto Kings Road so walking down Kings Road on your left is the Holly Stewart playing field home of Spalding Football Club and at the end we're going to turn left heading towards the bus station and on the right you'll see the Chatterton water tower which incidentally all the fresh water supplied to Spalding comes through that tower So at the T-junction we're going to turn left onto Swan Street and then follow the road round and that will bring you onto New Road and then you'll see Turner's fish and chip shops over there which will be on your right so this is Broad Street and um, Broad Street used to be called Crackpool Lane and at that time there used to be a prison on this road 
and when they pulled the prison down they widened the road and uh, made it broader so they called it Broad Street and on Broad Street you will find the Gentleman Society and this is basically it's a it's a museum um, but it's uh, one of the oldest societies in England uh, founded in 1710 and uh, it was founded by Maurice Johnson and some of the members were really notable people including Sir Isaac Newton so well worthy of a visit and apparently in its day when uh, when it started to become a member you had to donate a book worth at least one pound and apparently those books are still there in the library and inscribed with the donor's name There's some really nice buildings on Broad Street, including the Methodist Church, the Constitutional Club, and there's a sign still for Crackpool Lane. And that's the new Red Lion Quarter. Makes you wonder what was stood there before. So there's a, a little anomaly here. If we cross over the road into the car park, just around the corner, there are some stone arches which people believe were part of the Priory. However, you know, I think the evidence shows that they aren't actually part of the Priory, although the stone could be from the Priory because it's, uh, it's worked stone. But the arches are not original. And on Broad Street you'll find Elsom House with its 1920s Art Deco style. It's actually been described uh, by architects as a riot of 1930s brickwork uh, with bricks being laid in every direction. A very interesting building all the same. And on your left you'll find Herring Lane that runs down to the River Welland and it's so called cool because at the bottom here is where they used to unload the herring from the fishing boats when boats sailed up the uh, River Welland. So we're going to carry on now into the marketplace and here you'll find the South Holland Theatre. Uh, much of the marketplace has changed a lot now. Um, one of the oldest buildings is the Red Lion Hotel and quite famous because Jimi Hendrix stayed there. And a few years before that Mary Queen of Scots stayed there. And the marketplace leads into Hall Place and Hall Place is so called because uh, the Town Hall used to stand here years ago and it was also the location or the original location for the Johnson Sisters water fountain. And at Hall Place we're going to turn left and just on the left there is the Prior's Oven, originally part of the Priory. And the downstairs room was once a prison for uh, naughty monks. And there were gallows on the top. So just behind here is where most of the Priory would have been located. And just off the side there you'll find Gore Lane with a strange name 
um, but it's not actually a Gorish reason why. A gore apparently was a triangular piece of land and a triangular piece of land used to stand here including where the sheep market is now and that's where tournaments were held. So yeah that's where it gets its name from, Gore Lane. So sheep market here is obviously where the sheep markets used to be held and just where Hughes is across the road used to be a cinema and behind that where the library now stands was once a prison. So at the end of here we're going to turn left towards the Crescent and just passing the old magistrate's court there straight ahead and just behind that as we walk around the corner you'll see the old police station. station is just behind there 1857 and straight ahead is the old post office sorting office so as we enter the Crescent we're getting back to Vine Street which is where we started from so coming to the end of our walk so I hope you've enjoyed the walk as much as I have I hope I haven't bored you too much and I hope you've learned something and you can find the route for this walk and other walks on uh, my website which is guide to spalding.co.uk so that's guide to spalding.co.uk you'll find loads of useful information and feel free to drop me a message comment and subscribe and like so just before we get back to the car park on vine street uh, on your left is a little passageway worthy of a mention and it's called the hole in the wall passage a lot of people have asked why it's called that and it's basically because there used to be a church down here so it's a derivation really of holy well or holy wall so yeah there used to be a church down here at one point So as we arrive back in the car park where we started from and it's 3.7 miles so it's 3.7 miles round trip and that's taken just over an hour and a nice slow walk 